Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this week's tutorial. Um, and uh, this week we're going to be looking at um, packaging and nets um, and how you can set these up using a combination of Illustrator and InDesign um, you know, to sort of tie in with this upcoming packaging project you've got. Um, right, so I've come into Illustrator here. Now you see I've got a net, a very simple box net set up here. Um, and the reason for this is um, uh, whenever you sort of design any packaging or anything like that, uh, really, you, you want to draw this. I've obviously drawn it on screen, but you know, you obviously want to draw it out first, and you want to work out uh, the measurements of everything. Um, so there will be a little bit of math involved and a little bit of a um, little bit of measuring, but you know, that's sort of a given with any packaging, really. Um, so as you can see, if I come over here, now I've got you know um, my packaging set uh, set into the, the sides, obviously, um, and those sides are fifty mil by fifty mil, and then I've got my other piece of the packaging which is the tabs and the tabs are 10 mil by 50 mil um, so if you bear that in mind then um, this will help you set up the packaging then when you come to sort of build it from scratch really and what you really want to do is um, create a document that is kind of the size of the actual packaging because that will give you help then with uh, when you use the rulers to measure things out properly um, so obviously with this if I've got 50 by 50 so across I'd have 50, 100, 150, 200, and then obviously plus 10 here for the tab there. So my um, uh, my packaging width-wise uh, is going to be 210 millimeters long. And then if we go to uh, the height of it, or the, the breadth, um, that would be 50, 100, 150. So the document I should create for this packaging would be 150 mil by 210 mil, um, and then I'll add bleed to it, and I'll explain all that a little later. So we're going to recreate this now in Illustrator. So if I come to File, New, make sure my units are in millimeters, obviously. Um, and so what did I say? I said 210 for width, and my height will be 150. And make sure I'm C CMYK 300, obviously, because it's going to print. And I want to add three mil of bleed, and I'll, I'll sort of go through how to sort of sort out bleed um, later on. So I click OK. So I've got my document set up here. That's great. Now if I click Command R, um, or I go to View Rulers, Show Rulers. There we go. Now you can see my document now is set exactly to the rulers. Um, so this will help me really when I want to sort of set up the, the divisions between each um, box. So if I um, come back to this one, and I just grab this just for for reference more than anything else, and I, I come back to here. Zoom that out. Uh, let's give it a, a fill as well. Group it together, and we'll just put this to the side just to give you a, a reference to go with. Okay. So, like I said, you know we've got um, the ten across here, and then fifty, 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 fifty. Um, so, if we set up the um, the artwork first, now I the way I would do this is I would set it up with rulers, and then I would go back in then and uh, uh, create the artwork. Then you're using the rulers as a guide. So, like I said, if we go with a uh, but 10 mil here, there we go, and then if I add 50, that takes me to 60, if I add my next 50, that takes me to 110, if I add my next 50, that takes me to 160, there he is, obviously you take a bit more time doing it than I have, and finally then, my last one would be at 210, um, and that's fine like that, so there's my divisions there using rulers, and then obviously across then, my divisions would be 50, um, 100, but, but there, again, see I've just cocked that up there, so if I, uh, oh by the way, if you want to, um, if you go to guides, unlock guides, you can then go back in and change these a little bit, and let's drop that one but there, um, and then view guides, if I lock them in then, so there we go, so I've got my rulers here set up to help me um, you know, set this up here. Now, if I'm going to draw this, now you can see with, with packaging, everything is going to be done, you know, in boxes. Um, so I'd be tempted really to do everything with a rectangle tool. Um, now, how would I draw this? Well, I'd be stupid really to sort of, you know, if I click and I get my uh, rectangle tool, you know, I'd be very stupid to go 50 by 50, click OK. Um, oh, sorry, let's give that some stroke. So give it a black stroke. Fantastic. I'll be very stupid, you know, to sort of set that up there, and then I uh, hold out, duplicate another one, 
you know, duplicate another one, you know, that's, there's just, there's just no need for it really, you know, the, the, the easiest way to do this would be to, you know, create a, um, uh, a rectangle that is uh, 200 uh, by 50 long, and then I can just, you know, let the, the, the rulers um, show me where the divisions is, because obviously when you, when you print this out as well, you, you're not going to uh, um, have lines all over the place, you know, you're going to sort of measure it and, and, and fold it to measurement. So if I just click here, and I just create a 200 by 50, and there we go, if I lock that in then, that's great. Um, if I want toggle, if I click command, or even if I go, if I click command and um, colon, or I click view, guides, hide guides, you know, I can just sort of use this just to see, you know, what's going on. So I've got that one there, and then obviously then this one coming down would be 50, 150. So if I use my um, rectangle tool, if I click uh, width, Oh, sorry, I'm happy with 50 height, 150. There we go. Remember to keep my smart guides on as well, so I'm locked everything in. And there we go. So that's set up, uh, set up there nicely. Um, and then what I can do, if I wish, if I highlight these two, and I unite the shape using the Pathfinder. There we go. I've I've got my shape there. Um, now these little bits here. How would I do these? Well, I I'd be tempted to add these on then. Um, uh, to the side, you know, because, um, and then, you know, path random afterwards. So if I click there, click width 10, height 50, because remember the width is 10. Bring that uh, intersect in with there, that's great. Now, how would I create these little bits here? Well, what I'd be tempted to do here, if I bring my rules back on, say, for example, I wanted... Um, sort of, uh, you know, 5 mil, let's say, or even, you know, let's say 10 mil. If I grab a ruler, click that down to 10. Uh, there we go. Oh, that might be a bit much, actually. Let's, let's try 5. So we bring that down to 5. And then if I bring the other one down, so obviously 50 minus 5 is 45. So if I bring it to 45, and then what I can do then is go back in with direct selection, click the anchor point, and I can simply drag that until it intersects with the uh, line I've done, and there we go. I've got uh, you know I've got everything in sync then. And then if I just copy that shape, you know, hold Alt, bring that across. If I object transform, reflect it into the vertical axes, and I make sure that's intersected up. And then if I copy these two, one, two, hold Alt, and just. Uh, Bring that down. Let's make sure they line up. There we go. And I can also grab this one then. Command C, Command V, or hold Alt, and I can intersect that as well. And there we go. At least now I know all these shapes are exactly the same size just by you know sort of using this one there. Um, and then if I want to, then you know I can I can connect this all up using Pathfinder. Um, unite it. And there we go. See down here, now this one hasn't connected. Now be very careful when you're uniting shapes. If it doesn't connect, it, what it means is it's not sort of um, in line properly with the shape here. So, you know, I'd be very tempted to go back in, bring this, uh, this will be very, yeah, there we go. Now you see, see the line there. Now I know I'm connected properly. If I highlight them all again, I click unite. Now there we go. The whole thing is united. Now I can bring my, um, my guides back on then. Now you'll notice I've added a three mil bleed to this. Now, um, when you might not do this in your packaging project, you might just cut from scratch. But obviously, as I always say, when you send things to print, you ideally should put bleed on them, spe specifically when you're cutting, because um, you know obviously you're not going to get those white edges anyway. Now I, c I appreciate that this is quite a sort of unique, bespoke shape. Um, and it's going to be very difficult to sort of get three mil around the edge. Now, how are we going to get around this? Well, actually, there's a simple way of doing that. If I just click this, I'm going to object, path, offset path, and then I make sure my offset is three mil, which is obviously the size of the bleed, and I click OK. Now, can you see, I've created um, a three mil uh, sort of bleed around the edge, which can help me then, you know, if I put this... Uh, back on there. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm going to put my guides back on, not my grid. And you can see now I've got a 3mm bleed going around the edge. So when I print this out, 
Um, if I cut to these lines, at least then I know I'm not going to get any white edges or anything like that. You know, not so much with you guys because you were going to be sort of printing this yourself. But if you send anything to print, as I always say, you know, it, it's sort of paramount really that you um you put bleed on it, um, you know, so that the printer can can cut everything accordingly. Um, and that's pretty much straightforward there, you know. So now and I've got my dividers as well to, to sort of remind me uh, where these um these sort of divisions are happening. Now, what about dropping in my artwork? Well, that really depends. Now, I'd be very tempted. So if I just sort of create, literally just going to create a random piece of artwork here. Let's just say it's that big. Now, I'm just going to use a, a, a swatch here. Um, obviously, this is going to be, you know, your artwork. Now, if I want to um, sort of drop this, you know, into here, so I drop it to the back. You said, you know, it's all sort of looking a bit uh, crazy at the moment. But what I can do, use a clipping mask here. So I take this off, grab this, uh, and let me just sort of pump the weight up on this so we can, we can just see it a bit better. There we go. So there, there's my package in there. There's my bleed, and then there's there's my um, uh, my artwork, so to speak. If I use this as a clipping mask, so I make sure that um, this is, is uh, on top of the artwork. Um, you know, by either sending, sorry, either sending this to the back, or I bring this ahead of this by um, arrange bring to front. If I hold. Uh, Click this, hold shift, click that, and I go to object, click in, clip in mask, even make, or command seven. And there we go. Now, my artwork is fitted into the bleed of um, the actual shape of the packaging. So now when I print this, I'm not going to have, you know, stuff everywhere. You know, I can clearly see where I, where I need to cut these lines. Um, and if I wanted to, um, let's just sort of bring this off here. I bring my lines back on. Now, say I had sort of multiple panels with different pieces of artwork. So, for example, say I wanted, you know, artwork in this bit, but then I wanted different artwork in this bit. Very simple. All I got to do is if I use my uh, lines as a guide, let's just uh, take that off and add a stroke. So, let's just create a new clipping mask here. And obviously, uh, you have to be trying to line this up as best you can with the, the guides. There we go. Uh, yeah, that's about right. Fantastic. So there's my clipping mask there. And then if I bring this over here, make sure, let's grab this one. One sec, let me just find it. There he is. Um, oh, sorry, hang on. Bring that back off. Let's make this, let's make this a bit smaller so we can see it a bit better. I am I am used the best artwork here. Obviously yours will be a bit uh, clearer than this. Uh, so let's come out of isolation mode. Bring that there. Right, so make sure this now is my clipping mask. So I bring that to the front. Transform. Uh, sorry, arrange, even bring to the front. Hold shift, click the artwork, and then if I just click uh, object clip map make or command seven, and there we go. There's my artwork. I can then send that to the back. Um, and then that section then will be that bit of artwork. And then you can obviously build the rest of the sections in that way then. Um, and it's that simple, guys, you know. So I would really recommend um, you build your artwork um, in that way. Um, now, what if you want to use, say you've done, you know, your artwork, you haven't done an illustrator, you know, you've, you've done, you've used extensive photography and you, you've set up a massive PSD or something like that. Um, and you... Um, you know, obviously, you're not going to drop that kind of stuff into Illustrator because Illustrator can't manage it. When you've done this in Illustrator, we're going to drop it into InDesign anyway. But if you want to work with um, massive PSD files, you know, and, and sort of photography and things like that, you know, anything that isn't vector, which Illustrator can't handle, that's absolutely simple. We come to InDesign, and I'm just going to create a, a random A3 document here. Um, let's click OK. That's absolutely fine. Right, if I come back to Illustrator now, I'm just going to grab this. If I press Command C to copy, go back to InDesign, and then I press Command V, now you'll see Illustrator, and this is actually pasted in as a path. Um, this isn't um, an Illustrator file. This is a path that has been drawn in Illustrator 
but you can drop into InDesign and it, it, it does the same thing. So now, if I, if I just click this and I press File, Place, and I select what I'm after. Now I'm just going to grab um, a, a sort of big Shutterstock photo I've got here. You know, say that's my file, you know, and, and obviously look at, you know, the dimensions, 300 DPI. You know, you wouldn't drop this kind of JPEG or PSD into uh, Illustrator. If I just click Open, and there we go. I can use, in exactly the same way as this is used as a clipping mask in um, uh, in Illustrator, I can use exactly the same um, in InDesign. And obviously then, you know, if I just sort of bring the size down of this, you know, and I, I obviously, you know, you would have arranged the artwork accordingly. But, you know, as, as in exactly the same way as the clipping mask works in InDesign, you can do the same thing in, uh, sorry, in Illustrator, you can do the same thing in InDesign. And if you want to work in InDesign to do it, do exactly the same as you did in Illustrator. Set up your document, put your rulers on, and then work your, um, uh, sorry, work your rulers in to show where the divisions are. Um, and then, you know, using the um the rectangle tool you can then draw out these uh different sections um and you can even go in with direct selection as you do in illustrator and you can alter these as well so even if you wanted to do the tabs and stuff that is also achievable in indesign so it really is a case of of what your artwork is going to be if your artwork is going to be extensively vector I would build the artwork in obviously in Illustrator you know it's it's the only one to manage vectors um, and then I drop this a uh, AI file into InDesign for print but if you want to go straight to InDesign and um, set up the document in InDesign do in exactly the same way with your rules and everything that's absolutely fine um, and then once you're happy with it you know either you've got an InDesign file um, or you've got um, an Illustrator file, which you would then sort of file, place, uh, you know, you'd pick your Illustrator file and you drop that in here. Uh, I'd be tempted to put it on a, a sheet of paper that is bigger than the, um, than the document that you have. So then, you know, you've got plenty of room to cut out. Once you've done that, all you've got to do then is go to File, Export, uh, clear, chain, you know, obviously give it a name and title to, uh, you know, call it, um, package in, make sure it's print, press save, and then you come through to your export PDF. So you've got general compression, do not downsample, marks and bleeds. You won't need to put document bleed settings on because um, you would have put the bleed on using um, the method I showed you in Illustrator using an offset path. Um, and obviously you'll be printing on a piece of paper that is much larger than, than the, the packaging you've created. Go to summary, click export, and away you go. And that's your PF, PDF, you know, like you said, which would be A3 or A2, depending on how big your packaging is. And then you print that out and get cut in. And it's that simple, guys. So um, have a go at creating um, some of the, the, the nets that I give you in, in lecture. And um, when you're happy with everything, move on to the next tutorial.